Which wheel size is best? Well, we think that each individual rider knows what is best for them, which is why bikes with our fast kinematic suspension system allow you to run either a full 29er setup or a mixed 27.5 rear and 29 front, all without compromising the bike's geometry. The big wheels are great for rollover performance and outright speed, while going for the mixed size wheels gives you a bit more tyre clearance on steep terrain and a more playful ride feel. They're the business up front, party out back approach, hence being nicknamed mullet. However, changing the rear wheel size affects the geometry of the bike. Switch to the smaller wheel on a bike designed for around the larger one and you'll make the bottom bracket lower and make the seat and head angle slacker, messing up the handling and also potentially giving you issues with pedal strikes. Go the other way and you'll make the bike higher and steeper and you'll likely run into tyre clearance issues too, so neither approach is optimum. That is why our fast kinematic bikes have a geometry compensation flip chip in the rocker, allowing to use a 29 or 27.5 rear wheel without impacting on the bottom bracket height or the seat and head tube angles. That means the bike will still ride just as we intended, but you can choose the right wheel size for what you want to do. Adjusting the flip chip so you can switch wheel size is a simple and quick job, but there are a few tips that I'll outline here that are going to help this process go smoothly. Before we get stuck in, it is very important to note that this is a geometry correction feature, not a geometry adjustment feature. Using this flip chip to change geometry without changing the wheel size at the same time can cause the rear wheel to contact the frame at full travel with extremely serious consequences. Warning over, let's get started. First, you need to make sure the bike is nice and clean. The essential tools you're going to need are a 4mm and 6mm hex key, both of which you can find in the tool in the rear axle, but we would recommend using full-size hex keys or sockets for this job. In addition to that, we do recommend having a work stand, a torque wrench, a soft face hammer, uh, some rags or tissue, a little bit of grease, and also some blue thread locking compound. Now, this job is much easier if the bike is supported in a work stand, as then you can remove the rear wheel much more easily. Once the wheel has been removed, you should loosen the six mm hex bolts that secure the rear stays to the rocker link by a single full turn, but do not remove them fully. Next, you need to remove the shock. First, loosen the bolt at the yoke end using a 6mm hex key and then fully remove it. Take care not to lose the small silver washer. Now, loosen the frame end of the shock using a 4mm hex key. When the bolt is undone by around 6 to 7 millimeters, push the head of the bolt so that the locating tab and pin pop out from the frame. Now, undo the bolt fully and remove the pin. The shock can now be removed by gently lifting the rear triangle allowing the frame side to clear before sliding the other end of the shock sideways and free from the yoke. Undo the bolts that hold the stays to a rock link by a further turn. Press on the head of these bolts and that will now allow the conical flip chips to unseat. You should be able to see the chip pop free. If they're stiff and not moving, you may need to give it a small tap with the soft faced hammer in order to get them moving. You can now fully remove these bolts. Gently supporting the rear triangle as you do so will make this much easier. When the final bolt is out, gently let the swing arm come backwards. Be very aware that there are loose spaces in between the spays and the rocker link, so be prepared to catch these as you push the rocker link forwards. You now have full access to the flip chips. Note the markings on them. The line on the back of the chip lines up with the wheel size indication on top of the rocker link. You can rotate the chip to the desired position by rotating the shock yoke clear and then pressing it out. Make sure you thoroughly wipe clean all these parts, as you do not want there to be any dirt trapped here for reassembly. Place the chip back into the rocket in the correct orientation. A very thin application of grease onto the chip edge will ensure smooth future removal. To reassemble, place the spacer washers into the stays. Adding a small bead of grease here will help keep them in place and also help to keep the bearings running smoothly. You may find it helpful to partially rotate the rocker backwards before sliding the washers into position. When they are seated properly, gently lift the rear triangle up and rotate the rocker back until the holes in the stay and the holes in the rocker line up. You can then replace the bolts. First, put a small drop of blue thread locking fluid onto the threads and then start them by hand to ensure they're not cross-threaded. Now, snug them up using a 6mm hex key. 
We'll torque them to the correct spec later. Now you need to replace the shock. First, slide the eyelet of the shock into the yoke on the rocker side. Now replace the bolt, again with a drop of thread locker on the threads and a thin smear of grease on the shaft, ensuring that the silver spacer is still in place. Tighten it, but not all the way. Again, we will torque this to spec later. Now you need to position the frame side eyelet. You may need to gently lift the swing arm to get it lined up. Replace the eyelet pin, again with a thin smear of grease on the pin, and then slide it all the way through, being sure to line up the locating tab with the corresponding shape in the frame. You now need to replace the four mm bolt, again with a small dab of thread locker. Now it's time to torque up all the bolts according to the values printed on them. The frame side shock eyelet bolt is torqued to 10 newton meters. The rocker side eyelet is torqued to 11 newton meters. The rocker link to stay bolts are torqued to 15 newton meters. Well, all you need to do now is fit the new sized rear wheel and you're ready to ride. Feel free to argue with your riding buddies about which wheel size is best. This is a very important part of mountain biking. Anyway, we hope you enjoy your new fast kinematic equipped Merida. To find out more about the other technical features of our bikes, make sure you check out the playlist up here and you can check out all of our latest videos over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.